My name's Peter Coles. I've been interested in steam since I was about five years old. Restoring a Stanley steam car is basically the same as restoring any other old piece of machinery. Um, there's only one way to do it, and that's to take it all to pieces, spread it out all over the floor, and overhaul and recondition each part. This windscreen, for example, um, this was made originally from a pressed steel construction, very cleverly, and of course it would be impossible to make in a normal workshop. So I machined them out the solid. I've got some pieces of steel, as you can see here, milled a slot in where the window fits in. And then a friend of myself heated these up and bent them to fit the windscreen base moulding, as you can see here. Welded all the bits together, polished them, buffed them, and then sent them away for chromium plating. So being a steam car, it has a boiler. It's a fire tube boiler with a burner underneath which burns a mixture of petrol and diesel. Uh, like your gas boiler at home, we need a continuously running pilot light. Therefore, underneath the boiler is a small pilot assembly which runs on hexane fuel. That's kept in a tank underneath the rear seat. With a blowtorch, I heat up the vaporizer coil on the pilot. When that's nice and warm, I turn on the hexane the uh, hexane is vaporised, passes out through the toast rack type of slots in the burner, which also heats up the vaporising tube. So now the things are light, it's self-perpetuating and carries on burning. In the meantime, I have to hand pump, because normally when you're going down the road, you have a pump driven off the back axle. Uh, as we're stationary, no pump, no back axle moving, so I hand pump it. Once I've got the steam up and we start moving, I have to do nothing else, everything's automatic. The controls that you can see on the dashboard, starting on the right hand side, are your pilot light indicator. This is most important, of course if that goes out you could finish up with a very nasty explosion. <clears throat> Moving along the dashboard, you then have the speedometer. Next to the speedometer is the oil pump indicator that shows you you're pumping oil into your cylinders. Lower down is the sight glass, which shows the level of the water in the boiler, which is also very important because if that uh, becomes empty, you'll have another explosion. And so uh, at all times, you take one of these with you so that you can put the fire out. This car is 81 years old, and therefore its speed is not of the essence. Uh, it has a comfortable cruising speed of about 25 to 30 miles an hour, but above that it's a job to keep between the hedges, because the steering on here is rather tractor-like. Uh, it has no brakes, so it's very difficult to stop, and if you run it up to its top speed, which is about 50 miles an hour, the whole front end starts bumping up and down because there are no shock absorbers. So we tend to cruise at 25 to 30 miles an hour. There are about 50 of the steam cars running in the UK. Most of them are stand-live. 
Mr. Stanley was the largest manufacturer of steam cars in the world. He made about 11,000 between the years of 1898 and 1924. So there weren't very many made when you think that in 1924, two years after Stanley had closed, Henry Ford made his one millionth car.